Where has the flu gone? This is a question that many people have asked me. And in Scientific American, there's an article called The Flu Has Disappeared for More Than a Year. Mask wearing, social distancing, and other steps to stop COVID-19 have also curtailed influenza. Now, there's so many different perspectives out there and ideologies as to why the flu has disappeared. And I want to go through many of them, some that are likely and some that are very unlikely, and help you discover what the real truth actually is. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski, and welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and to check out all my natural health videos, go to www.drz.tv. We put videos on there that will not be found on social media due to to issues with censorship. Now, as we go into this article, one of the things that we see right away is a graph basically showing us, you know, this flu spiked very high in 2018. It was very high in 2020, but without a doubt, according to this graph, the lockdowns pretty much shut the influenza down, which is pretty significant. Okay. It really helped a lot. Now, the article goes on to say, since the novel coronavirus began its global spread, influenza cases reported by the World Health Organization from the northern and southern hemispheres have dropped to minute levels. The reason epidemiologists think is that the public health measures taken to keep coronavirus from spreading, notably mask wearing and social distancing, also has stopped the flu. Influenza viruses are transmitted in much the same way as SARS-CoV-2 and the viruses that cause COVID-19, and they are less effective at jumping from person to person. So this is one perspective, is that it was the measures we took. Now, measures such as masks, and scientists believe that no, it's not possible that the mask could have done it because we know that these viral particles travel through the mask. So that couldn't have done it, but those are, those are perspectives that are out there. Now, there's also, it was lockdowns, kids not being in school, spreading viruses, people not going to work, spreading viruses, and uh, less communication from person to person. That is one idea as to why it has slowed down. And then, of course, there's the other, well, we are more clean. You know, everybody's wiping down surfaces and, you know, washing their hands more. And still, that's unlikely considering, you know, the virus doesn't really sit on surfaces. We know that now. And, and um, so it's still unlikely that that's the reason as to why the, um, the uh, influenza has just disappeared. Let's go down a little bit. Now, in this graph right here, it shows the U.S. flu positivity rates by week. And you can really see in 2018, there was an enormous spike. 2019, enormous spike. 2020 and 2021, the flu pretty much is gone, okay? Now, the article goes on to say, because each year flu vaccines flu vaccine is based on strains that have been circulating around the world during the past 12 months. It is unclear how the upcoming 2021-2022 vaccine will fare should the typical patterns of infection return. The WHO made its flu strain recommendations in late February as usual, but they are based on far fewer cases than normal. Yet with less virus circulating, there is a reduced chance of mutation, so the upcoming vaccine could be especially effective. So, Basically, they're saying, you know, well, there's less flu and we may have a better chance of the vaccine working better, the flu vaccine. Okay, so was it the vaccine that did it? And there's actually a lot of people who even believe, well, you know what, the COVID vaccine's probably protecting people against the flu. There's a lot of thoughts behind that. And still unlikely because, I mean, COVID was for COVID. The COVID vaccine was for COVID. It wasn't for the flu. And... Um, there's another possibility out there, and the possibility is known as viral interference as to why the influenza has pretty much disappeared, okay? And we're going to go over that in just a moment, but I have to also mention that a lot of people believe that the reason that we have no influenza is because everybody's testing positive on these COVID tests for COVID, and it's pretty much, you know, Basically, all influenza is being claimed to be COVID. That's another huge thought process out there. And once again, put in the description what you think that it is. Okay, now we're going to get into the viral interference, which I just mentioned. Now, viral interference is also known as super infection resistance. And basically what it is, is when the inhibition of a viral reproduction is basically um, caused by a previous exposure of cells to another virus. So basically meaning that one virus doesn't allow another virus to exist in the body 
at the same time. Now, there was a huge concern that there were go there's going to be something called twin demics. Okay, you're going to have the flu just skyrocket, then you're going to have COVID skyrocket, but it didn't ever happen. Okay, the flu still is showing to remain very low. And then we get back to this viral interference. And what basically has been shown through um, research and also just thrown, uh, shown through the uh, rhinovirus and H1N1 is that a lot of times two viruses won't exist in the body at the same time and infect the body, the host at the same time. And it just doesn't work out. And so basically the thought process is, is that with flu and corona, it's unlikely that it could happen. And the reason for this is because when one virus hits the body, you're going to have an increase in interferon. And this is basically a way of ramping up the immune system. So you have this increase in inter interferon in the immune system. The immune system is ramped up. And then basically what it does is it doesn't allow for another virus to actually infect the host. And so the thought process behind this whole thing of viral interference is that basically COVID ramps up interferon and then blocks the flu from actually going and infecting somebody. So this is another thought process. And if there was going to be one that is, you know, likely uh, when we talk about whether it was masks and lockdowns and all that stuff, or was it more of like a viral interference, it, it would likely be more of the viral interference type of thing. Now, the article goes on to say public health experts are grateful for the reprieving cases in the future, includes more hand washing, face coverings, and temporary social distancing. When people become sick, perhaps flu seasons can be less severe, even as health restrictions lift and groups gather together again. Okay, so here's the thing about this, is that we talked about many possibilities as to why it's happening. But at the end of the day... Oh, Part of this really comes down to like if you had to just go down to like the the very small details of what really matters and what really matters is how do you actually protect yourself from this whole thing and is it masks? Is it lockdowns? Is it vaccines? Is it, you know, what is it that truly protects you and your body? And what protects you the greatest is going to be you having really good baseline health, meaning that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, based on an enormous amount of studies that have come out over the past months and even year or so, that those people who have the comorbidities, the obesity, the high blood pressure, the cholesterol, the blood sugar issues, people who are suffering from autoimmune conditions, you are going to be, you are going to be the one most likely to have a negative outcome from any virus. Okay. So if we get down to like the nitty gritty of what you actually need to do, you just need to take care of yourself. I mean, we can sit here and discuss forever, you know, what the reason is behind this. But I mean, if, you know, coming from me, giving you information as to what you can do, it all comes down to increasing your baseline health. That's all that really matters here. And the way that you can do it is if you're suffering from a condition, work to overcome it and overcome it naturally. If you're on medications, work to get off them and get off them using natural methods. If you're obese, lose some weight. You know, these are all things that you have to really take into consideration because you know what? I don't want you to just be worried about how you're going to protect yourself from uh, COVID. I'm worried about how you're going to protect yourself from heart disease and cancer and diabetes. And you know, despite COVID last year, it wasn't even the main killer of people. I mean, we heard about how horrible it was, but we didn't hear about the, the cancer and heart disease that was still outperforming COVID. Like, and these are preventable metabolic diseases that people through bad lifestyle choices are developing in their body. So you, what it comes down to is you got to take care of yourself and you have to really look at the facts and what really matters. Because at the end of the day, if it's not COVID, it could be the flu and it could be pneumonia. There could be a whole host of different issues as to why people are dying prematurely. And uh, so what we want to do is make sure that we are working to take care of ourselves and also using immune boosters as well. There's plenty of natural immune boosters that you can use. I'll put a link to a bunch of them in the description. And I would recommend, and these are ones that I personally use that I trust, even like full kits designed to boost your immune system. And I would recommend that you have these things in your house because I will tell you that, um, you know, 
the being that I, I run a clinic where we see a lot of people, it has become more and more of an issue to actually get in um, nutritional products uh, that we can use clinically. And because there's huge supply chain issues right now. So make sure that you're not like somebody who's just waiting till the end of the year in order to try to get these things when you're already sick and everybody's storming the stores to get it because there, there definitely could be issues. I mean, we just don't know how much the supply chain will be broken with these different immune boosters and even like with the FDA going after certain ones that have been proven to be really helpful trying to take them off the market and turn them into pharmaceuticals and uh, making you go to your doctor to get a prescription for them. It's just been kind of crazy out there. So make sure that you're doing the right things. And once again, put your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be chatting with you there.